everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I don't like to leave any dye behind. I have leftovers everywhere. Sometimes they are leftover food coloring. Sometimes it's a leftover random type of food coloring like what we are going to use today. But right here I have a leftover dye bath. This is the dye bath that I used in a self-striping colorway that well, that video may or may not be out yet, <laughs> but it has a lot of acid and it's warm. And so if I just pop the heat on low, we are ready to go. Now, this is my dedicated dye pot and I'm using, going to be using dedicated dye tools, even though we will be using a food coloring based dye. And so that means that any food coloring things I use in this video now are not used for food. So if you do use both food coloring and commercial dyes, it's important to make sure that you don't contaminate anything. And so once something is used for commercial dyes, it's always used for commercial dyes, at least here in my household. Well, I mean, that's the way it should be everywhere, but yeah. <laughs> for the dye today, we have this edible glitter that was a bit of a pain to work with in the original video because I seem to remember it sticking all over the place to my gloves. But they created some really, really cool speckles. And that video probably came out over a year ago. These have been sitting out for a very long time. So today, we're gonna play with them. <laughs> and actually, before going to gloves, let's just, might turn my hands red. Let's just dump a bunch out in my hand. So it feels almost like plastic. Um, I think these are just sheets of like sugar and who knows what, but yeah, we're just, we're going for it. We're going in. They seemed like they weren't dissolving when I used this before and I wonder, are they gonna dissolve or are they gonna just float on the surface? This is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be interesting, but let's put just sort of lighter down there. I mean, they are sticking to my hands. Ooh, but look, it's a little, I don't know if you can see. It's definitely a little shiny. That's probably where the edible glitter comes in. I expect that they're designed to be difficult to dissolve because if you're used, oh, that's a lot. Uh, because if you're using these, you probably don't want them to dissolve. You want them to sort of sparkle on your cake or your cookie or whatever it is where you're using them. And I'm going lighter, this red color on one end. We will be flipping the yarn and adding more to the other side. I'm seeing both speckles, but these are like really wide speckles and I'll dump the rest back in there for now. Um, oh man, there's so much of it. I'm seeing both speckles and I'm also seeing um, some more spread. But let's get that blue color. There's a bit of a panic when I thought maybe I wasn't filming. This blue, I mean, it's you can see the sparkle. It's very, very pretty, pretty stuff. Um, so last time I think I went all over with both colors. This time, my plan is to do blue, and I, gosh, I don't know what the acid concentration in, is in here. Uh, in general, blue food coloring takes longer to absorb, so it needs more acid and a little bit more heat. Reds strike faster. So my expectation is that we might not see as much speckling from the blue because the colors might spread further. but. Looking here right now, um, and we can go heavier in this middle area. Like, I'm not also not seeing a ton of purple yet. So I just wonder how sharp this color might be. But you can see, like, it sticks to everything. Uh, sort of pop that back in here. So that way I have it to use trying to let it fall. Oh, I'm seeing some bluish speckles. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands and I think we're gonna leave this 
ooh, wow, it's working well. We're gonna leave this for, I think, five minutes. You know, I think I like using these low immersion way more than I did when I did that first video, when they just stuck everywhere. I see so many blue speckles in there, and then there's a bunch of red ones in here. I think that the heat just helps it dissolve, and when I was doing this hand painting, it wasn't quite sinking in. I think that combination of the heat is really necessary here. Awesome. We might not even need the five minutes, but I'm gonna give that time and then we'll flip and we'll add more color. Looks like there's so much color, but now we'll see all the white appear. Oh, we got some good spread. Wow, I'm actually really, really impressed. Um, even though we've been going heavy with the coverage for these speckles, there's definitely going to be areas and patches without them. I will probably move things around a few times. Um, assuming we don't, right now, immediately use up what's left. Um, I'm also impressed that my fingers maybe have a tiny amount of staining. Um, I don't even know if the camera can pick it up. It's just a very, very small amount of staining, which also impresses me given that, you know, we had this all over, all over. So I wonder, the spread is likely a result from areas where the, whatever, this glitter, whatever we want to call it, is hitting the, it's hitting the water first. I'm going to try to get a screenshot of the ingredients list of these vials because I definitely do not have an ingredients list handy right now because I just had these empty vials, which also makes it harder for me to <laughs> film things and a reason why they were just sort of sitting, waiting. They're like, Rebecca, we're waiting for you to come back to us. Oh man. And like they go so far. I haven't tried, and I mean now that I'm using dedicated dye stuff, I wouldn't try tasting them. I don't know if I've ever like tasted something quite like this before, but huh. Uh, maybe I can go taper this off a little bit more. Do a tiny bit more in this. Yeah, with the glove when I was doing this with the gloves, it just stuck everywhere and was so frustrating. I'd rather get a little stain. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> oh man, it feels like a magical pixie dust. Uh, but at least it dissolves. So, I mean, I like playing with glitter. So, <laughs> and I think I use, I mean, not with yarn, but I use a lot more glitter than my kids do. So, <laughs> so there is that. Uh, I kind of wish that the colors would be as intense on the yarn as they are, like right when we see it go on. And I know that they aren't, but because it's just so pretty when this first hits the water. Huh. I mean, if you have a good and of course you guys are a little far away so you can't see this sharpness. Uh, the steam also makes it a little hard. I can't tell how well this is showing up on camera, but especially now since things have sunk in a bit more, then it isn't as sharp anymore. Uh, but I, gosh, I don't know what I'm saying. I, I still don't think I would recommend going out and buying this. If you want a good food coloring speckle and you live, ooh, that was a lot right there. Um, if you want a good food coloring speckle and you live in the United States, I recommend Kool-Aid. Uh, Kool-Aid is really great. Um, it's granular and can give some really awesome speckles. And it's way cheaper. I don't remember what these things cost, but a packet of Kool-Aid is 
you know, between 25 and 33 cents. But the speckles that you get from Kool-Aid are also pretty big. Or, uh, sorry, but the speckles you get from Kool-Aid can also be really sharp. And here, and here we've got some really nice splotchy type speckles. Goodness, I think I don't want to wait. Yeah, we're going to move this again right now. Uh, sort of checking for areas that just had less color coverage from what we did previously. And I'm wondering, no, no, it's still sort of showing up because part of me was curious if uh, by when I move it, if it's going to look like things might disappear because they're less apparent. But I think that we're going to get more wash of color each time we move it. And that's fine. I really want to use this up. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to. All right. I took almost all of the red. Yeah, the red doesn't pack anywhere near the same punch as it does on the glitter. Red food coloring is a little difficult um, because you need a lot of pigment to get a true red to show up. And maybe you need less to get something glass-like, but this is nowhere near as pigmented, say, as like cherry Kool-Aid, which is just so pigmented. <laughs> Oh man, just more and more and more. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> I could never go this heavy with acid dyes, oh, but it's so much fun. I still have more. <laughs> there is still more. So each time, if you have trouble getting it off of your hands uh, when playing around with this, I recommend going and using soap and water. Uh, that seemed to do the trick for me. It's possible that I moved things too soon last time, but you can kind of see just how pigmented things look right now. It feels a little blown out, but there's just, they're so sharp when you first put it on and it is so fun. Uh, I do have a bit left so we can move again. I hope that the yarn will have a nice balanced feel to it. Uh, I am feeling some more purple vibes. I think what was cool when I did this on the counter was that we ended up with something that was like blue and red speckles but that did not feel purple. So that was one thing that was unique last time. Let me zoom back out. There's still a lot in there. Okay, some of these are staying. Sometimes with unconventional materials, it can be hard to say, okay, I'm dumping the rest of the red in my hand. Well, or at least I'm trying to. Good enough. <laughs> Although I might wash out and save these containers. It's hard to know with some kinds of techniques if you're exposing new areas or if things that felt like maybe they were sharp before aren't actually that sharp after all. Um, so that can take a little bit of trial and error. We could still end up with some more semi-blank areas and we just got to be okay with that. But that is all of the red and Trying to open up those areas. There's a lot more blue left. And I'm just gonna try to go in. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and just very lightly, lightly with the blue over there. I mean, I don't want it to go on too heavy. Ugh. There's so much. Okay, maybe, maybe I should wait like a couple minutes and then do the rest of the blow. Darn, darn, darn. 
I'll move it again because I don't want to just have like a mono layer. I want that modeledness in there. So, but okay, I'm having fun. <laughs> but goodness, I guess because I'm going so heavy in doing this, I will have only dyed two skeins with the two jars that I have, which isn't a lot, but I'm going really heavy. I could have spread all of this out more. So there's enough that it could have gone a lot further than what I'm pushing it. Okay, blue, McBlue, blue, sir. Let's see. I mean, it's looking pretty good. Okay, we can add some more. And, well, I don't, I want the, like, red area away. Okay, we'll try to be, like, a little controlled with this. <laughs> it's like being, let's be controlled with something that is effectively, like, fairy dust. Um, oh man, I think if there was like a fan or something in here, it would just go and not come back. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Okay, there. It's done. It's gone. It's on the yarn. And I think the yarn we're creating is really pretty. <laughs> so I just, I was like, this has been sitting here looking at me for so long. I just needed to use it up. <laughs> All right. I'm going to let this sit, I think, for, why not, 10 minutes, and then we'll come back. You know what finally stained my hands? Although ultimately not that badly, but rinsing out the vials. Not the speckling, but ha touching it with damp hands. Yep, that'll stain ya. <laughs> All right. Well, this was a fun, fast project. What's funny is that it's probably not gonna be that fast when I go to edit it, but, ooh, and look at that color. The water is definitely translucent. I was thinking I might use it again for something else, and maybe not. But I am now going to set this skein aside and let it cool so then we can go wash it. This non- oh, I should have used a sparkle yarn. That would have been funny to make the glitter glittery. Haha. <laughs> oh, well. Um, this skein is going to need some more washing than a normal food coloring dyed skein. And not because of bleeding. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding here at all. The issue is the sugar. Um, I'm assuming there's sugar in our edible glitter and we want to make sure that that is sufficiently washed out. I'm now going to use some dish soap and I'm going to do a few more rinses than I would do if this yarn were not dyed with a like cake decorating product. <laughs> But then I'll put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And we'll come back and take a closer look at our speckles. Don't leave edible glitter behind. Why should you? I don't know if I would go out and buy this for the sake of dyeing yarn. I think that the cost benefit analysis isn't there. But if you're using this to decorate a cake and you have some left over, then we created a beautiful colorway with some really fun speckles. I'd have to honestly think, certainly the red and the purple tones we have in here could be created with cherry and grape Kool-Aid. The blue has more punch than one packet of ice blue raspberry lemonade. So I think, yeah, you'd have to do some cost-benefit analysis of how many packets of blue raspberry lemonade you'd need to get something that felt like this. I also know that if I started going this heavy with Kool-Aid, I don't think we'd have quite as many, oh, we'd have a lot of speckles. We definitely have some larger patches of color and this is so cool. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really can't leave any dye behind. I, I'll have to go back and look, but I think it's absolutely been over a year since I filmed the original video with these colors and they've just been sitting waiting for me to play with them again and so I and I love the colorway that we created. I get a lot of questions these days about food coloring or acid dyes. Which should I use? I think that if you're starting out playing with dyeing yarn, 
Food coloring is a great way to go. It's a way to test the waters, experiment with techniques, and figure out what you like the best. Then, if you want to go into commercial dyes, you know what kind of equipment you want to get. Do you want a catering steam pan, or do you think you'd rather have a kettle with a steamer basket insert? I mean, you might end up wanting both, like I use both, but if you're starting out, it helps you know what to look for and can limit the amount of tools and equipment that you acquire at first. I personally am comfortable dyeing yarn with food coloring in the pots and pans with, that I eat with. I didn't do that today, I use dedicated dye equipment, but that isn't necessary in my opinion. Food coloring is less light fast than commercial acid dyes. Or some commercial colors aren't super light fast, but I do have some videos where I show both items that I knit years and years ago and how they still have vibrant color, but then also how wet yarn in direct sunlight can fade in the matter of hours. So I recommend don't leave items dyed with food coloring in direct sunlight, especially when wet, but normal, normal wear of a winter hat or something can be really, really great. I wouldn't keep dyeing yarn with food coloring if I didn't use and wear items that I dyed with food coloring for long periods of time and still have beautiful, vibrant colors. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want, if you love the yarn I dye and want to help support the content at the same time, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. A lot of the yarn I dye goes into the shop, and so you can buy some yarn, knit with it, or crochet or weave and watch the video at the same time. I write down the date and the video title on all of the skeins of yarn so that way you can easily find the video again and learn more about how I created it. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video. And comment down below. If you're dying yarn with food coloring, what's your favorite technique? I think for me, huh, beyond breaking Wilton's Violet, I do enjoy speckling with Kool-Aid powder a lot. Oh, man, we've come a long way since the very first episode of Dye Pot Weekly. You should go check that out too while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching everyone.